Hello everyone, and welcome back to your boy, UE4. Today, we'll be covering setting up a pickup system that allows us to acquire and add items to our inventory. This system paves the way for a number of features we'll be setting up in future videos. Before we get started, if you want to connect with me, feel free to follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to the channel for more randomly educational content. Alright, let's hop in. Our pickup blueprint will be comprised of three components. The model representing the item, the interaction radius that detects when the player is within proximity, and a 3D widget that gives a preview of the item's name. In order to allow our pickup object to dynamically alter its representation and assign data to be any item in our database, we'll be using a special variable of the data table row data type. This special type of variable, when made public, will appear in our details panel as a dropdown for a particular data table and a row within a data table. When we go to choose a value for these dropdowns, the model of the pickup will change to reflect the model assigned in that given data table row. This means we'll have a single blueprint to represent all possible items that our entire project will have. Now, for the interaction radius, when we enter its bounds, a 3D widget will be shown with the item name and a button to press to pick the item up. When the user presses that button, the pickup is destroyed and the data it's holding is added to the player's inventory. That is the overall vision for the pickup object. Let's make this happen. One small change we need is an adjustment to our database. Open up your data tables folder and open up your dt underscore items data table file. Inside, we need to make sure that the quantity values for all entries are at least one. This is going to be important with how we'll be adding items today. Once you've made that change, we're done. Let's move on. Next, let's tackle our 3D widget. In our content browser, create a new folder called Interactables. Open it up. Inside, right-click, User Interface, and select Widget Blueprint. Call this WG underscore pickup underscore nameplate. Start by removing the initial canvas panel. In its place, add a scale box. Rename this to Sizer. This controls the scaling of the text we'll be placing next. Now, add a text element as a child to our Sizer element. Rename this to Name Text. Now, this looks a little wonky right now as the preview mode is having it scale to the entire screen. In the top right of the viewport, change the drop down that says Fill Screen to Desired on Screen. Next, let's make sure that this is editable in code. Select our name text element and check the is variable checkbox next to the name. Now, many of you already know that I love default values. Let's change the text property to be default name, just so that if we were to ever see it, it's quite clear what it means. The last setting we need is setting the horizontal and vertical alignment values to be fill. Once these are set, we're done our pickup nameplate object. Next, let's dive into creating our pickup blueprint. In the content browser, right click, blueprints, and select Blueprint Class. Choose Actor for the parent class and hit OK. Call this BP underscore Pickup. Open it up. Jump over to the Viewport tab and let's create our three components. In the Components section, click Add Component and select Static Mesh. Rename this to Model. Next, add a Sphere Collision component. Rename this to Interaction Collider. Make sure it's a child of root, just like the model is. In the Details panel for this component, Find the Sphere Radius property. This controls the size of the sphere independent of the scale property. Increase this to 128. If you'd like a larger starting size for pickups, feel free to increase this further. Next, look up and add a widget component. Rename this to Name Plate. Also make sure that it's parented to Root. Let's adjust its position a bit so that, on average, it's above the model of the pickup. We can adjust the height on a per case basis later on, but for now let's just make sure that it's a general value. After adjusting, let's fiddle with some settings. In the Details panel, in the User Interface section, change the Space property to Screen. This causes the assigned widget to be rendered as a regular 2D widget, but using the 3D positional information it has access to by being a widget component. Next, change the Widget Class property to our newly created WG Pickup Nameplate widget. The next two settings assist in adjusting the final size of the assigned widget and may be adjusted as you see fit. For draw size, I'm using 250 by 250, with draw at desired size checked off. The last and final setting to adjust is farther down. Please uncheck the is visible property, so this widget is hidden by default. With that, let's move on and set up some variables for our pickup. The first variable will be called information of the type st underscore item. This is the raw information structure that this pickup will be holding. It's also what gets passed to the inventory when it's picked up. Now, this is not intended to be edited directly, but simply to hold the data that is automatically populated by our code we'll be adding shortly. Next, add a variable called item of the type data table row handle. 
This is the variable representing the dropdown I mentioned earlier. Make sure this variable is marked as public. Now, in order to save us some time in the future, if you look at the default value for this variable, make sure that the data table property is set to dt underscore items. With those two variables made, let's get into some code. The first thing we want to get set up is being able to dynamically update this object whenever we use a new value for the item variable. To do this in the most flexible way possible, we'll be using the construction script. Now, this beautiful work of art is a way of running code whenever an object is created. It also runs the object when it is moved around while in the editor. You have no clue how much I love the construction script. In the functions list, double click construction script. Inside, we'll start off by actually fetching the row data from our item database using our item variable. Right click and add a get data table row node. Then drag in a reference to our item variable. From it, look up break. Connect the break node to our get data table row node. This will fetch whatever row is chosen in the item variable and return the corresponding st underscore item structure that is found within. You'll notice that it actually outputs an odd gray pin. This is known as a wildcard pin. It'll dynamically adjust its data type based on the pin connected to it. We know for a fact that this code is used specifically for the DT item database. So we can expect that this pin should output an ST item structure. Drag in a set reference to our information variable. Connect the out row pin to the input pin of our set node. You'll notice it changes color and suddenly adapts itself to whatever input is being provided. Pretty, pretty magical, eh? Next, drag in a get reference to our model component. From it, look up set static mesh. Additionally, drag in a get reference to our information variable. From it, look up break. Connect the model pin to our set static mesh node. All of this code right here is the bread and butter for dynamically adjusting our pickup object to be whatever is selected in the item variable dropdown. Before we start backflipping in excitement though, we've got some more code to type into existence. The next thing we need is the ability to update our nameplate widget so that it displays the item name assigned in our item and information variables. The reason this particular code is not a part of our construction script is that it contains some special nodes that aren't actually available to the construction script. In the event graph, find or add a begin play event node. In order to actually reference the widget assigned to our widget component, we need a special node called get user widget object. This returns a generic user widget object reference, which we need to cast to our specific nameplate widget. Using this converted reference, we grab a reference to our name text widget and create a set text node. The actual text we'll be setting is a fancy concatenation of some elements. We start with a set of square brackets encasing the letter representing the input that is needed to pick up the pickup. Feel free to put anything here. If you're wanting to go a bit further, try dynamically acquiring the input letter and appending it here, instead of just hard coding it like I am. After this, we break open our information struct and grab the name property. We typecast this to string and add it to the append. Then the final string is typecasted to the text type and is used to update our nameplate widget. With that, we're done. Let's sprint ahead. The next thing we need to get working is the act of actually interacting with a pickup, which makes use of our interaction collider component. In the event graph, select our interaction collider component and scroll down to the bottom of the detail section. Click the plus button for on component begin overlap in order to add the corresponding event to our event graph. Make sure to do the same for on component end overlap, as both will be crucial here. For the begin overlap event, we start by checking whether the initiating actor for the interaction is the player. This is to prevent other actors from accidentally triggering this code. We do this check by getting a reference to whoever touched the collider and grabbing a reference to their parent class. From there, we check whether that originating class is the player class. If it is, we set the visibility of our nameplate component to true. After that, we fetch a reference to the active player controller and request that input events be enabled for this actor because they're disabled by default. That marks the end of this line of code. Let's get the opposite set up. Copy over our code and connect it to the end overlap event. First, change our set visibility node to set the visibility to false if the player is detected to have left the interaction collider. After that, replace our enable input node with a disable input node so that this actor loses access to input events when the player is no longer nearby. With that, our initial interaction setup is done. Now, let's hook up our pickup blueprint to the actual inventory system. We need an input event for the act of picking up our pickup. The key for this is entirely up for you to decide upon, but I'm going to choose the letter E. Add your respective input event, and from the pressed pin, look up our add item function. Also make sure to get a reference to our information variable and use a break node to expose its properties. Connect the quantity pin to the quantity add pin. Then, to ensure we're always in the know when our code decides to betray us, add a branch node to confirm that the addition was actually successful. If it is, we then destroy the pickup. My friends, with that, our pickup is complete. 
Let's try it out. Jump to the main editor view. Drag in our BP pickup object. You'll see that it starts with no model. That is because by default, no row is selected in our item variable. Let's fix that. In the details panel, in the default section, open the item dropdown. Then pick any value you'd like for the row name dropdown. You'll see that every item we added to our database is here. Choose one and watch the pickup magically update itself to reflect the data found in that row. Let's see this in action. Hit the play button. As we enter the proximity of our pickup, we'll see our 3D widget appear. Moving around will show that the widget is always facing us, but remaining where it's positioned in 3D space. If we leave the bounds of the pickup, this disappears. If we press our interact key while within the bounds of the pickup, it will disappear and we'll have successfully added it to our inventory system. With that, we have some killer functional pickups. And that's it. Thank you once again for joining me. If you liked this video or found it useful, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more. If you'd like to get in touch or hear my daily development rants, follow me on Twitter. Most importantly though, leave your thoughts and ideas in the comment section below as I'd love to hear them. As always, I'll see y'all in the next one.